Right, the next one is actually, I'm going to be cheating. I'm going to do two experiments in one. And we're going to start off with reminding you about sound. There was a film a long, long time ago, long before you were born. It came up the catchphrase in space, they cannot hear you scream. Uh, I'm going to prove that to you in front of you. Right then. So I have got a little doorbell in this glass jar. If I can make it up. You can hear that ring quite clearly, okay? Right then. What I'm going to do, I've got a big pump hiding here. It's going to suck all of the air out of it as soon as I find the on switch. Anyone know where the on switch is? There we go. So I'm now sucking all the air out of it. Now you've got to imagine it's. Right. In space, there is no air. The reason you're hearing me at the moment is because my vocal cords are doing a big hard effort to vibrate, lots of those vibrations are going through the air to you. Now, if you suck the air out of the situation, and this is becoming a bit of a vacuum, it won't be perfect, it's doing a bit of a job, the sound will travel less well because there's not been very much air in there. Now, I've probably talked for long enough, let's just have a look, see if you can... There's that switch, there it is. Can we connect it up again? Listen how noisy it is now. It's on. Listen. Now we let all the air rush back in. So no air means no sound. Normal air, obviously you can hear it nice and clearly. Which leads me on to the next thing. Adults in the room are going to like this demo. I'm afraid students are going to hate this. Uh, those of you who have already experienced it, you know what I'm going to do because I'm just not very nice with this. Great. As you get older, one of the joys of getting older is that your hearing gets worse. Now that is a benefit for this experiment. Especially what goes is your top range of hearing, your low noise. So I'm afraid if you've got a high pitched voice in the class, your teacher will never hear you. Now, what you can do is do something a bit like this. Right then. Just going to check. Can we just have a show of any card? If you can hear an annoying noise, put a card up. I don't mind which one. And hopefully that will be adults as well as children. Yeah, we all have. So we can all hear that annoying noise. Now, what I shall do. Ah, there we go, you're yeah, happy for, just for a moment. Right, so I can explain myself whilst those echoes still go around your skull. Uh, I'm now going to turn it back on, and then I'm going to turn it up to a point at which I can no longer hear it. <coughs> now, that means at that point, me and the rest of the adults in this auditorium can easily have a conversation, while the rest of you are going, ah! <laughs> uh, we're going to see if that works. <laughs> Well, just make sure right I'm just going to move it up to beyond my hearing range. About there. Oh, tiny, 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 tiny. See, that ring is wrong angle. Even better. You think that's bad? I can now wiggle this up and down as I'm talking. It's not bothering me in the slightest, and it's starting to drill into your brains. It's great. No, believe it or not. Ah, I've turned it off now, so what you're hearing now is just the echoes. Um, that has been used as child repellent in places like railway stations, where they don't want lots of kids to congregate for no good reason. They will either blast you with high frequency sound that the adult travellers won't hear, or they use classical music, both of which we know children have allergies to. That is the end of my demo. Over to you. Okay guys, this, uh, this next one is it's a little lesson in safety really, because now remember, I know what's going to happen here, I'm trained to deal with this sort of thing. Now when you're doing experiments in school and you're heating up using Bunsen burners, we often say you've got to make sure that the Bunsen burner, uh, I mean the test tube or boiling tube is pointing away from you, okay, but we also might say heat things gently, okay, so if you heat things gently, you don't use too strong flame. I'm going to show you what happens if you heat something too strong. Um, and what the dangers could be. So if you imagine, if you were really close to this and it happened, uh, how bad it could be. Okay, what I've got in here is something called boric acid. 
Okay, so one type of acid. I've now I've got some methanol. Methanol is a very flammable liquid. Okay, it's a type of alcohol. Uh, I'm going to mix those two together. And then, just for good measure, I'm going to add a bit more acid. Okay, a different type though. So this time we've got concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, this one's a really, really uh, nasty chemical. If you've got this on your hands, uh, it's really bad chemical burns. Okay, when you come uh, when you come to secondary school, you probably won't get to use acids like that unless you did like triple science or A-level science or something like that. Then you might use the really strong ones. Um, so okay, we've got that mixture together, two acids. <coughs> now we're going to heat it. We're going to heat it using a blowtorch. I think the flames on these get to around a thousand degrees. I think. Okay, that's ten times hotter than boiling water. <coughs> Thank you. 